Hi, today we're going to talk about dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis is one of the things that's used extensively in science. You really need to know how to do this. It's going to make your life way easier if you do. It's kind of what I consider one of the cheat codes of chemistry and physics. So learn this now and it's going to give you benefits for a long, long time. So what is dimensional analysis? Well, it's using what you know in your head, like 365 days a year, 52 weeks in a year, um, 60 seconds in a minute, that kind of thing. And the units, remember no naked numbers? So we want to use our units to make conversions. So we're going to convert from one thing to another. So let's do a couple of examples. How many seconds are in one day? Okay, when I use this, I, I um, like to say to people, when it's their birthday, I send them notes, emails, or whatever, and I say, uh, today has 86,400 seconds. I hope you enjoy every one of them. So how did I get that 86,400? Well, I use dimensional analysis. First thing I always list is what I know. So I need to somehow get seconds to days. You may know how many seconds are in a day, in which case you're done. You may know how many seconds are in an hour. I needed to go through some conversions. I needed to say 60 seconds was one minute. I needed to say 60 minutes was one hour. And I needed to say 24 hours was one day. That was for me, okay? I needed to do that. Now, things have different names. 60 seconds and one minute are exactly the same thing. Kind of like five $20 bills and a $100 bill. Exactly the same value, it's $100, or four quarters and one dollar. Same value. So if I put 24 hours over one day, that's like multiplying this by one. And that's the most important part about dimensional analysis, is that you always have to multiply by one. So I always start with what I know. What I know is one day. That's given in my problem. I'm trying to get to seconds, but I know how many days. So I'm going to, days really, it's, this is kind of deceiving because it's really a fraction. It's really over one, isn't it? We don't write the over one because it's understood, but it's there. So that means the word days. Don't worry about the numbers yet. Just look at the word day. Day is in the numerator. So to get rid of it, to cancel it out, you need to put it in the denominator. Now when I do a dimensional analysis, I always figure in my own head that I'm just multiplying. I'm not dividing at all. I'm just multiplying. Yes, sometimes I hit the division key on my calculator, but I'm really multiplying by something that's equal to one. So I want to get rid of the word day. That goes in the numerator. And the conversion factor that I have, the thing that's less than a day, is hours. So I'm going to put hours on the top. You see how the number 24 is next to the word hours? That's when I fill in the word, the number 24 and put it next to the word hours. And what's next to day? The number 1. So this is like multiplying 1 day by 1, only now it's in hours. And these cancel out. So now I'm left with hours, but I didn't want hours, I wanted seconds. So I'm going to look up here and say, oh, I know, I can convert hours to minutes. Again, hours is in the numerator. To get rid of it, I put it in the denominator. My conversion factor is hours to minutes. Then I look up here, the number 60 is next to the word minute, so I put 60 in here. 1 is next to the word hour, so I put 1 in here. That's like multiplying by 1. And now the word hours go away, and I have my information in minutes. But I didn't want minutes, I wanted seconds. So I need to do one more conversion. I need to convert from minutes to seconds. You guessed it. Minutes is in the, is in the numerator, so I'm going to put it in the denominator. My conversion from minutes to seconds, this is equivalent to 1. 60 seconds is 1 minute. So I put the 60 next to the word seconds and 1 next to the word minutes. Oops, did that wrong. That should still say seconds. And basically, I'm done. Now I'm going to go ahead and let my fingers dance on the calculator key. I'm going to take 1 times 24 times 60 times 60 and hit the equal key. And because these are all 1 in the denominator, I don't need to divide it by anything. If any of these was something other than 1, I'd need to put a division in there. But it's not. So when you multiply all that together, you get 86,400. What's my units? The only thing I have left. Seconds. And that's what I want. So one day is 86,400 seconds. Let's do another example. And feel free to stop the video at any time or rewind if you need to review this. If I went too fast, because I sometimes do that. All right, how many inches are in two miles? So I wanted you to know that it's not always one. It's not always one. Sometimes it's two, sometimes it's 10, sometimes it's 
46.9, I mean, it's all kinds of numbers. But inches in two miles, I know I said we weren't going to use the English system, but this is just to show you how to do the conversions and dimensional analysis. So how many inches are in two miles? Well, I know that 12 inches are one foot. And I know that 5,280 feet is one mile. You may not have known that, in which case you have to look something up. You have to find a way. You have to have a conversion factor from one to the other. You might have gone feet to yards, and maybe you know yards to miles. I don't, but maybe you do. So you could have gone feet to yards in here. One foot is three. What well, three feet is one yard, and then yards to miles. Okay. So again, start with what I know. I know two miles. That's the very first thing that I know. That's the first thing that I write down. From here on out, I'm just multiplying it by one, something that's equivalent to one. I have miles in my numerator. I want to get rid of it, so it goes in the denominator. My conversion factor right here gives me miles to feet. So one mile is 5,280 feet. The number 5,280 is next to the word feet, so it goes right there. The number one is next to the mile, so it goes right here. And my word mile cancels out. I'm not worried about numbers right now. I'm canceling out um, the, uh, the units. So now I have it in feet, but I want it inches. So I'm going to convert feet to inches. Again, feet is in the numerator. It needs to be in the denominator so that it cancels out. My conversion from feet is feet to inches. This is the equivalent of 1. So 1 foot is 12 inches. 1 next to the foot, 12 next to the inch. And I take 2 times 5280 times 12. I'm left with inches, and I get 126,720 inches in 2 miles. We're going to do one more example. This one's a little more involved, so hang in there with me for just another minute or two. All right, so we're going to convert 16,241 meters per second into kilometers per hour. So there's two things we're converting, meters into kilometers and seconds into hours. So this one's going to be a little bit longer, no more complicated. Just keep your units straight and you'll be fine. Let's do some conversion factors. I know 60 seconds is one minute. I know 60 minutes is one hour. And I know 1,000 meters is one kilometer. If you didn't know this conversion, that's one of those ones you need to have in your head, so make sure you memorize it. So start with what I know, 16 to 41 meters per second. How many seconds? That's every one second. The one is understood. I don't need to draw it in there. I don't need to write it in there. It's understood. I decided to first switch meters to kilometers. You can do seconds to minutes first. It's up to your seconds to hours first. Totally up to you. But I decided to do this first. No reason. Just did it. So meters is in my numerator. To get rid of it, it needs to be in the denominator. So the word meter goes down here. And my conversion is meters to kilometers. So kilometers go up here. So I could say one kilometer for 1,000 meters. Or I could say 1,000 meters for one kilometer. They're both equal to one. But I'm going to put meters in the denominator because I have meters in the numerator here. And I want them to cancel out, which they do. The number 1,000 is next to the meter, so the one, number 1,000 is next to the meter. One is next to the kilometers, so one is next to the kilometers. So now I have it in kilometers per second, which is not what I wanted, but at least I'm heading in the right direction. I need to do something with that seconds piece, and here's where it's a little bit different. Seconds is in the denominator, so the word second needs to be in the numerator. That's a little change from what we've done before. Seconds in the denominator, so seconds has to go in the numerator, because I want to cancel it out. And what's my conversion? Let's see, I have seconds to minutes right here. So seconds to minutes, 60 seconds, 60 seconds, one minute, one minute. The word seconds cancel out. And now I have kilometers per minute. I wanted kilometers per hour. If I change to, kilometer, uh, to minutes to hours, again, minutes is in the denominator, so minutes needs to be in the numerator. My conversion is minutes to hours, minutes to hours. My conversion factor is 60 minutes is one hour. 60 minutes, one hour. And the word minutes cancel out. So now when I do this on my calculator, here's what I would press on my calculator. 16 to 41. I'm not going to say times one because I know it's the same thing. Times 60, times 60. And then I'm going to hit the equal key on my computer, on my calculator. Okay? I'm going to hit the equal key. And I'm going to say divided by 1,000. 
because anything in the bottom is divided out. I can divide by one, divide by one, divide by one. I'm going to get the same thing. But the dividing by a thousand is really important. Then I'm going to hit equal, and I'm going to get 514,659.6 kilometers per hour. Am I left with kilometers per hour? Kilometers in the numerator, hours in the denominator. That's kilometers per hour. So I did end up exactly where I wanted to be. So I'm done with this problem.